So there is breakfast. So I have a base of bananas and pineapple with blended up one frozen banana, a little bit of pineapple blended up with soaked chia seeds. And that looks so good. A little bit of grated fresh turmeric there on top to get me my daily turmeric. Mm. And we had plenty of fresh pukinikini on the tree today. Mm. And some plumeria. The thing I love about tropical flowers is that when they're like perfectly ripe and super smelly, they just fall off the tree. They don't last long, you know? It's not like you could take it inside and put it in a vase and it would last for a long time. But for the day, one of my biggest pet peeves is food touching my chin. I just can't stand it. So on Friday's live stream, I got a question after the fact. So it was a comment on the live stream that's, that's still there. You can go watch it. And they were hoping that I would talk more about life's passion and how you find what your life's passion is and how I found mine which kind of implies that I have which who knows maybe I haven't even found it yet the the issue that I have with a lot of these these perceptions about about people who are doing what they're passionate about is that you know they were they were born with a life's passion and, and one day they just woke up and they were like that's it. And then they just went about it and did it happily ever after. It's not the case. <laughs> you find your life's passion by pursuing what interests you. That doesn't mean that you're going to be interested in something and then be able to create the career of your dreams out of it, especially immediately. It takes a very, very, very long time to be able to do that. So if you eventually want to have a career that's really fulfilling and is in alignment with what you're passionate about, then you start from where you are and you start taking very small steps towards that. Keeping in mind that every single experience, every single job, every single relationship that you have is going to contribute in some way, either a skill set or a way of empathizing or connecting with other people or something that is going to be brought into you and is going to eventually contribute to what you do later in life. So the only advice that I have for younger people who want to eventually, you know, pursue a career that they're passionate about is to just start wherever you are, start accumulating as much experience both professionally and personally as you can and just start learning start exploring the world around you start exploring yourself learning about what's even available to you you know there was a time in my life where i had no idea that this what i'm doing now is even a career option and in the future i might discover another niche that i would prefer to be in and move into that i think the key is consistency so consistently moving forward and gaining experience and working and checking in with yourself and seeing how you're feeling about what you're doing and how you could perhaps make adjustments to change that to to create a life that's more fulfilling to you personally and to keep in mind that as you learn and as you grow what you're passionate about is probably going to change and being open to that as well so not not pigeonholing yourself into a place where you feel like well no this is what I wanted five years ago and this is part of the five-year plan so I gotta do it give yourself some flexibility I know young people don't like to hear this I know I didn't like to hear it when I was young but uh, when you're 18 or 22 or 25 you don't really know yourself yet I think the same is probably true at 28 I think in 10 years I'm gonna look back and be like wow you didn't know shit, what an idiot. And that's just par for the course. And try to let go of that storyline of, oh, well, gosh, I'm already 19 or I'm already 20 and I haven't accomplished this yet. And oh, look at this person. They're over here living the life of their dreams. And look at me. Everybody's circumstances are different. That's just the truth of life. And sometimes it's fair, sometimes it's not. Sometimes people get what they worked for. Sometimes they're handed shit. I've been handed a lot of stuff in my life that has definitely given me legs up, 
that other people haven't had. And I think it's unfair for people who have were born in, into different circumstances or who bumped into different circumstances along the way to compare their progress to mine when I've been given so many boosts that in many cases I did earn through hard work and dedication and persistence, but others were just luck or a beneficial circumstance, meeting the right person at the right time, being born into a family that is at least somewhat financially stable, you know? So when you're trying to pursue that life that, that you wanna be, that you're passionate about or live your passions, the comparison doesn't help. Like if it's negative comparison, you can be inspired by other people's lives, but I know for me too, it's too easy to look at other people and go, oh, why couldn't that be me? You know, why can't I have that? And then start beating myself up and going into the spiral of bullshit. <laughs> A real downer. And I'll end it for now with this thought that when we're thinking about what we're passionate about in life as well, like that's kind of selfish. Framing what you want to do with your life in terms of how you want to contribute to the betterment of the world, your local communities, within your own family, how you want to contribute there really helps to take us out of the selfish comparison and really gives us a helpful framework for which to judge how well we're doing with our, with our goals, you know? And also helps to keep us really grounded because if your life's passion is to just own Lamborghinis and be so rich that every woman wants you, then you've just signed up for a hollow life no matter what. And, I oh, was just kidding, I'll, I'll end it with this one. The other, the other trap of that comparison is to think that you should want the Lamborghinis and all the money and the mansion and all that stuff. That, that's what I should want because that's what success looks like. But I know I've had a lot of moments too where it's like, oh, I want the house in the suburbs and two and a half kids and a nice car to drive around and a big ring on my finger and all the nice designer clothes and handbags because I thought that that's what success or happiness looked like. But when I really thought of it, I realized I don't want a career where I have to be really busy. I don't want a career where I feel pressured to make a lot of money by working long hours or by taking advantage of people. I want a life that affords me a lot of downtime. I want a life that affords me to be home and watch my kids grow up, right? I want a life that's, that's simple and uncrowded where life isn't that big of a deal. That's what I want. I want my life to not be that big of a deal. And we're taught to covet the extraordinary. And we're taught, you know, I even I read a meme this morning that was like, don't settle for being ordinary. And it's like, <laughs> what is wrong with ordinary? Like ordinary and fitting in with this society is I guess a pretty sick construct, but I'm perfectly happy to be less than extraordinary. I don't, I don't need to run ultra marathons. I don't need the Lamborghini. I don't need to be the skinniest girl or the prettiest girl or the girl who can do her makeup the best. I'm just happy to be me. I have a tattoo and it's in another language. It's in Swahili, but it means live quietly. I just, you know, cause I was 18 and I didn't know what cultural appropriation was, but it means live quietly. That's all I've ever wanted was to just live a quiet, simple life with people that I love, who love me, where I, we can just like drown ourselves in mutual appreciation. And that to me is success. And if I can do good things in the world with my career at the same time, if I can communicate with people and use my communication skills and use my ability to figure out how to use a camera, to benefit someone else's life, then that to me is fulfilling my life's passion. Because living simply and living happy, happily is my passion. 
and I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to to share that with other people who share the same goal. So be free with what your passion looks like. It doesn't have to be extraordinary. Okay guys, I'm gonna finish this and get to work and then I will see you for lunch. She hates the paparazzi so much. Lunch time. So I had some leftovers from when we made summer rolls the other night for the kiddos. And I have some purple sweet potatoes. These are warm because I just cooked them. And then these are cold because they're a day or two old. And then I have leftover potatoes from last night. So a big bowl of leftovers with the addition of a little bit of sweet potato. And then I'm going to take this, my favorite sweet ginger chili sauce. Very, very low in the sodium, which I appreciate. Oh, I'll see if I can. And it is very spicy and flavorful, so I'm just gonna use a little bit, get my noodles a little bit covered. And then these potatoes are so flavorful, I don't even think I need anything on them. And that'll be a nice lunch. I'm trying to learn this new editing software. It's like I switched from iMovie to Adobe Premiere Pro, and it's... Oh god, poor Levi, he was trying to take a nap the other day and I was just like in the bed trying to figure this out and I was just like fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> So, I'm finally getting there. It's just a process, but I realized I'm a little bit behind on my hydration. So I'm gonna drink some water, eat my lunch, and keep trying to figure out how to edit these freaking with the new, with the new stuff. Okay, let's do it. All right, well, it is dinner time, and I made myself a giant plate of gluten-free corn and, what is it, corn and rice pasta right there. And then I made lots and lots of veggies on the top. It was just sautéed veggies, eggplant, onion, carrot, garlic, all the goodies, and some kale in there as well. And then I made these um, meat-free, I call them lentil beet balls. If you guys want to see how I made this, you can watch our video on the sexy tablespoon. You can also watch that if you um, have questions about my makeup job. Fair warning, I think I'm going to eat everything on top and then probably only half the pasta and save the other half of the pasta for lunch tomorrow because I've kind of been snacking while I was cooking too. Mmm, so I'm just gonna eat until I'm full. Oh my god, it's so good. And we're not gonna have dinner with you guys tonight because Levi's absolutely beat from work. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm pretty tired myself. So we're just gonna go chill. Thank you guys for watching what I eat in a day. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you will all begin taking steps towards living a life that you are truly passionate about. Okay, subscribe down below if you're liking these videos. Ding the bell so that you'll be notified when I upload a video. I love all those comments down below. Thumbs up is always appreciated. And until next time, make better choices for yourself. No one else is going to do it for you and take really, really good care. I will see everybody very, very soon. Bye. Somebody was really tired last night. So we didn't end up having dinner with you guys. Which means that we forgot to post the picture on Instagram and do the shout out yeah. at the time. And then we were just editing the video and we are like, oh yeah, whatever, it's not a big deal. Nobody cares anyway. But then we looked at the post on Instagram and like apparently people do care. Yeah. And I'm feeling pretty guilty right now. And I really wasn't going to do any shout outs, but when I looked at the first person who actually liked the picture. This is like literally making me tear this up. This is like 10 minutes after I didn't care and I was like, oh, who was the first person? So Kiki 
what is it, 61,776 or would you prefer 61,776? Either way, Kelsey? Kelsey? How would you pronounce that? Kelsey. Kelsey? I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Kelsey. Well, because when we read your bio, we were like, dude, we got a freaking... That, that bio means a lot to me, girl. She says she's a mom, animal lover, and aspiring vegan. You want to hear the legit truth about what you eat? Follow Lily Koi Hawaii on YouTube. She changed my life. <laughs> yeah, I felt that. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> she's flower dog. Um, Ashley, I met you in, uh, at Carl Smith Beach Park. She was the second like. You almost made it, girl. Almost. Oh, Got she the was the anyway. second, yeah. dude. That was pretty close. And she's wearing mm -hmm. a shirt. The Fishes of Hawaii. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I had a shirt like that. Yeah, she's a real cool chick. I, um, I met her before she decided to go to college over here. Dude, I didn't know people actually liked that stuff. I know, I didn't I thought know I was evading think. their privacy, but... No, 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 no. Why? One of these days she'll be first. It's not today. You're a dick. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this. Moon, moon in it, in, moon. Night two. Hold on, let me see. Mo moon and night. I don't really care how you pronounce it. That is a dog inside of a cooler and I am in love. Can Where? you see that? No. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is freaking cute. Those are the shout outs for the week. You guys, thank you so much for participating and being so awesome and, and filling up my life with like goodness and appreciation. I just feel so blessed right now. Yeah. Sorry we were so tired last night. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh sh Oh wow. Does okay. this look natural? Fuck like, you. We're, natural, we're dude. just chilling. Ooh. Okay, weirdo. You smell like maple syrup. I didn't have any maple syrup spice. You've been yeah. eating the fenugreek. I didn't. 